Welcome to the shooting show. This week, Byron's back in Africa, leaving Namibia behind and heading south to the Winterberg Mountains. And I follow up a very interesting roadside row book. Traversing Southern Africa, Byron joins Orion Hunting Tours guides Swears and Dare Fan in the Eastern Cape. Heading for the mountains, it promises to be an exciting expedition. I've left Namibia now. I'm in South Africa visiting two very good friends of mine, Swears and Dare Fan. We've headed deep into the Winterberg Mountains. We've been on the road for about an hour and a half across rough dirt tracks. Uh, this farm that we're on now has quite a big problem with uh, bush pigs and jackal eating the, the young lambs. So over the next week we're going to try and alleviate the problem and uh, do a little bit of other hunting as well. We've got kudu and mountain reedbuck on the cards. So I'm really looking forward to it. This place is just absolutely stunning. It's quite unlike the terrain that we were, were hunting in Namibia. And the change is very nice. Uh, looking forward to seeing what happens over the next few days. Swayze and Deerfun were here a couple of weeks ago and they spotted quite a large number of mountain rebuck on this valley side just behind me. So we're going to stalk along the bottom, keep having a, a look above us and, and see what we can see. This terrain is vast and rugged. The game here roams free with not a single fence in sight. This wild hunting is challenging but incredibly rewarding and set among a breathtaking backdrop. Heading off into the bush, they soon spot a mountain reed buck, their intended quarry for the last hours of daylight. This is a female and although some culling is required, Dayfan is keen to get Byron a nice ram first. Settling on a comfortable vantage point, Swears, Byron and Derfan enjoy the view while scanning the distant valley sides for sign of movement. Moving on and spying the land once again, more reed book come into view. Having located a large group of reedbuck a long way off, they trek closer for a better look. Okay, Byron. I've definitely spotted three mountain reedbuck up there. There's a ram and two ewes. Just beside that white stone? Yeah, just to the left of that. Okay. If you look, the darker one is the ram. Can you see it? Yeah, I've got him. Okay, I think... If we get through to that little tree over there, you can lean against that tree and take a shot there. But we'll have to move quietly. Okay. With the animals spotlighted in the last rays of sunlight, they move carefully into a good shooting position. It's a long shot, but trying to close the gap would more than likely spook the group. For more than 15 minutes, the identified ram remains hidden behind an obscuring tree, while the other reed books stand in full view. More than a little frustrating. Okay, I've got him. Eventually, the ram steps out, presenting a broadside shot. Uh -uh. The strike is solid, and just out of camera, they see the ram go down. Down. I think he's gone down in that long grass. Yep. Okay, that's quite a long shot. <laughs> that is 
dude. Well done, my friend. Thanks again. Well, Baron, three hours into our safari, you managed to take this beautiful mountain read by Graham. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, I think you can tell the rest of the story for us. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. We hadn't come up this valley very far, and we saw half a dozen mountain reed buck just standing, well, lying down actually on this uh, hillside um, behind us. They were a long way away when we first spotted them, so we got in a little bit closer. But uh, my my trusty rangefinder, which has never let me down before, <laughs> the battery died, so I was unable to know exactly how far it was, which I, I'm used to knowing. But fortunately, you guys hunt up here a lot and knew the ground so we were able to you know give me the distance at just over 300 yards which you know is, is quite a long shot but we had uh, plenty of time um, by the time they got up and I had a, a nice rest and you know managed to get a reasonable shot off it was actually quite low in the body um, but it did the job and uh, it went down just fine well that's me managed to shoot my first mountain rebuck ram uh, there's quite a few ewes which we need to cull on this particular farm. Uh, there's about 80 for the year, so we've seen some on this mountaintop behind us. Sways and Deerfin are just going to head up and I'm going to follow on behind them and see if we can make some sort of a dent into the year's cull plan. It doesn't take long for them to locate another group of reed book and Sways yeah, displays some fine shooting. Not bad. Three ewes. With a very fine ram and three more cull animals in the bag, it has been a successful few hours in the Winterberg Mountains. Next time, Byron will be testing his nerve against bush pigs. My wingman Byron Pace hunting the African equivalent of the roebuck, and now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. The opening salvos of the grouse season dispelled many doubts that the wet spring and summer had seriously depleted this year's hatch of the iconic bird. While some areas were down, mainly in the Angus Glens, many more shot record bags. Notably, Farndale in North Yorkshire. This 900 acre moor, keepered by Bernard Moss and Alan Foster, bust the previous record with 129 and a half brace. Nearby Westerdale also shot a hefty bag of 384 and a half brace, and in Northumberland, East Allenheads Moor shot a record bag too. Full story in the next issue of Modern Gamekeeping, out this week. Also as the season got underway, the Scottish Gamekeepers Association declared that grouse shooting is more important than ever, even despite the recent bad weather. Sporting shooting is believed to be worth about £240 million to the Scottish economy. It directly sustains 1,200 full-time jobs in Scotland and indirectly supports a further 1,440. Britain has won two shooting medals in the Paralympic Games. Matt Skelhorn, defending his Paralympic title, was just beaten to gold in the men's air rifle prone, narrowly outscored in the final by Frenchman Cédric Ferre. Meanwhile, James Beavis won a bronze medal for Team GB in his air rifle category. He missed out on silver by just 0.1 points after a shoot-off. Police and gamekeepers are testing a new poaching prevention method in Surrey as part of the Country Watch scheme. Pheasants have had their legs marked by a non-toxic dye, identifying them as belonging to a particular shoot. This is intended to act as both a deterrent and a way to identify pheasants if they are poached and later turn up for sale. The full report on the trials is in the September issue of Modern Gamekeeping. Ian Malarkey topped off an already impressive 2012 with a win at the Parazzi Down the Line Grand Prix. Malarkey, a common face on the DTL scene, took the high gone honours with a stunning 200 597, just one ahead of Dave Toomer on 200 596. Ten-year-old Ryan Sharp showed great form, taking third in Colts with 163 456. That was the Shooting Show News. While Byron was in Africa earlier this year, I was on home turf and had to deal with a roebuck living in dangerous proximity to a busy road. 
it was important to get this particular animal to avoid a potential road traffic accident. As you can hear, we're near a very busy road here. Uh, it's just before 7 a.m. A lot of commuter traffic. We've got a bug working in here. Uh, we saw him last night. We couldn't got, get a safe shot on him. Uh, so we've come back down here uh, this morning, see if we can catch up with him. Father's an accident. Uh, he's in a dangerous place where he is. Uh, let's just see if we can go and catch up with him. This road is in an accident hotspot and it was imperative to resolve the situation quickly. Though I tried on a number of occasions without success, luckily this morning the book stuck to the script. Stalking not far from my original position, I soon located the beast's antlers crossing an adjacent rape field. There's a book just come out of the rape. He's gone under the hawthorn edge. Hopefully he'll come out this side. Go forward a little bit. Get onto the bend. Hopefully we can catch up with it. With the hedge negotiated, the perfect angle is on for a shot with a good backstop. And for us to capture it all on camera, it doesn't get better than this. The book is a runner, but clinically dead on its hooves, as the shot was spot on. Here's down. Happiness is a bolt action rifle. The beast is down and after the customary wait I walk in, test the eye response to confirm death and drag the carcass to a suitable spot for the Gralloch. With a firm upward stroke and retrieve of the fin knife, I sever the major blood vessels for a perfect bleed out. It is important to bleed the carcass well to get the best venison. Swapping knives to the EKA fish switchblade, I unzip the beast's abdomen and open up the throat to separate the food pipe from the windpipe, shaving off the flesh so I can tie a strong knot to prevent spillage. Taking a firm hold, I pull out the green gralloch along with the tied off food pipe, leaving everything else above the diaphragm intact. Removing the anal tract cleanly completes the gralloch. The EKA switchblade is absolutely ideal for aiding in the gralloch. I make the initial incision uh, with the fin knife and the swing blade gut hook is absolutely ideal for unzipping and this is the EKA fish blade as you can see it's quite a nice filleting knife plenty of flex in the braid for filleting but I actually find it ideal for taking the back side of the deer out Absolutely superb piece of kit. It was the narrowest of opportunities, but I was ready to take the shot when I had the backstop. With the four-legged jaywalker safely in the bag, it's time to review the morning stalk. This was a classic heart shot. Just in behind the shoulder. You can clearly see the exit wound. Did the classic thing with a heart shot, lifted slightly at the front, ran 40, 50 metres, stood a little bit unsteady, down he went. Nice little book, typical of this part of Yorkshire. We're off the world land here, so no great big heads, but still, everyone's different. He's in quite poor form, this beast. He's living on the edge of a road here, not very good territory, he's probably a displaced buck. Best place for him is in the larder. 
With the ground saturated, the Polaris Ranger became the natural option for recovering the deer. It's one more for the larder and a potential road traffic accident prevented. Thanks for watching. That's it for this week. We're out every Monday, 7.30pm UK time. This is The Shooting Show.